It does seem kind of be bull weighted. It's a bull. <laughs> Hey, good morning. What's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Take a look at that. A uh, little more spread out. I might tempt to go out surfing today, especially with the weather. 77 degrees out there. Man, we are some lucky people here in South Florida. Uh, and to you other folks out there up north and such, I uh, hope you're keeping warm. Hey, uh, let's see what's going on today in today's markets. Kind of a weird day. Markets are down in equities and uh, looks like gold and silver markets are kind of sideways. So we're getting a little monkey hammered in the overnight markets and we'll talk about that. We're gonna look at the 24 hour charts. Uh, discuss a little something that Ted Butler had brought up in his recent article here and uh, a good article on GATA.org as well. And uh, hey, let's see what happens here. Let's move along. I'm gonna reduce that window a little bit there. This is the live uh, 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 Lauderdale by the Sea Cam and I believe it's the Windjammer Resort and Beach Club over there. Pretty cool place if you ever visit down here. Um, I use their camera all the time. Well, here's today's uh, meme for the day. In a bull market, everybody is a genius. And of course, that's kind of what we're gonna see here. We're gonna see who the true geniuses are. Because um, in a bull market, it's easy to make it. Uh, the, the, the real question is when you get into a bear market, can you keep it? And even more importantly, can you make money in a bear market? Those are the geniuses. Those are the people I wanna talk to. As I said, you know, we've been in a bear market for equities in quite some time now. Uh, and, you know, we can really say that we've been in a bear, uh, uh, no, bull, I'm sorry, bull market in equities for quite some time. And of course, you know, every talking head out there that's invested in any of the uh, uh, technology stocks across the board uh, prior to this year pretty much has been a genius. You know, when all of a sudden you're out there and the, uh, the, the dishwasher is talking about uh, an investment trade he just made <laughs> and he just made a good look of money. Uh, and people that don't even work that just stay home. Uh, are, are sitting there making money in day trades. You know, like everybody's a bull, everybody's a, a genius in a bull market. We all know that. Again, think the, ta the tables are turning right now. Uh, so let's see what happens here with a lot of these geniuses out there. And uh, sorry about that. Let me expand that one more time there. There we go. And move on to, and let's see, move on to the spot prices and see what's going on here. Uh, 1802.72 currently right now. We're close to that 200-day moving average, which I think is about 1810. Uh, a low of 1789 overnight and a high of 1809. Uh, so kind of we're trading that 1800 range. Where gold goes, silver will follow. Uh, and let's do the uh, gold to silver ratio here before we move to the next page as well. Uh, low on silver, 2206. Man, they're trying to hit that 21 mark, uh, the high 21 mark. Uh, look at that though, 2268. 50 cent moves. You know, I'm. You know, that's that's kind of what we see. That's the norm in our market. I'm. You know, we've seen it slowly get uh, uh, monkey hammered down. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> uh, to this uh, 22 level, we saw what 24 dollars a couple weeks ago or something like that, a week or two ago. Um, I'm not good with time frames actually, but uh, I believe maybe two weeks ago we were nearing that 24 dollar mark, and now we're about half of that 22, uh, and moving into the 20, high 21 area, but. 50 cent move upward, I'm fine with that. These 50 cent moves are cool, mostly when they bounce back 50 cents. Uh, we like to see that. If they're not bouncing back that 50 cents, then uh, that's kind of concerning. Uh, but we're kind of seeing a rubber band effect when silver gets uh, drugged down, uh, it kind of bounces back. And I believe a lot of this has to do with the, uh, uh, for years and years and years, the paper markets, which you would consider the tail of the dog, have been wagging the dog, if you're familiar with that term, the tail wagging the dog. And the dog being the physical markets. I believe, I sincerely believe we're getting close to a point where where the dog is going to start wagging the tail, uh, finally. And what does that mean? I believe that means an end to the uh, ridiculous manipulation in these paper markets on COMEX, uh, and uh, an end to this ridiculous commercial short selling that we're seeing. I believe they're going to get their heads handed to them on this. Uh, most of them, except for the brightest one out, but the brightest of them all out there of the commercial banks, uh, which would be JP. Uh, they're going to profit from this, unfortunately. Those snakes, uh, that's my opinion. But let's see uh, what's going on here with platinum as well. Platinum hanging on to that $1,000 mark pretty easily. Uh, we haven't seen a dip below that, uh, uh, you know, into the nine, high 900s yet. So low 1,020, a high 1,041, currently sitting at 1,026. Looks like things have uh, uh, bound, you know, jumped back up a little bit. Look at uh, palladium, though, down $69. What a swing on that. Wow. So, uh, uh, but we don't talk about palladium too much because nobody buys it. Let's look at these 24. Oh, I know I said we were going to do it before we did that. Let's just do a quick gold to silver ratio here, and I'll use my uh, reliable Siri. Uh, give me one second. 
1,802 divided by 22.32. 1,802 divided by 22.32. So the ratio is currently sitting at, right, as you can see right there, 80.73 to 1. Uh, so, you know, that ratio, you have to believe two things here. You have to believe that uh, e either silver is leading the way or gold is leading the way. And I believe that uh, uh, gold is holding its own pretty well. And I think it's going to um, uh, be, you know, obviously it's going to keep continuing to go up. Silver seems like it's lagging behind on that. If that ratio starts to get wider, I believe that we will see some explosive moves on silver to the upside at some point here in the near future. Again, silver will follow gold. That's just the way it's, it's always worked that way. All right, it doesn't work the other way around. And uh, let's take a look at the 24 hour charts here. Uh, do a quick refresh there, let's see what's going on. Let's see where the market has dropped. Of course, in the Crimex markets on gold, there you go. There's gold, there's the Crimex market. But you know what, It's twenty. we have 23 hours of Crimex markets just because they call the New York Comics markets the NYMEX markets are only open from, uh, what is it, 8.20 to uh, 1.30 or something like that. Uh, uh, they still own the, re look, they own that New York Globex market right there. So uh, this is, Crimex markets are almost 23 hours a day. Uh, and you can see it opens right there. So uh, this just happens to occur in the NYMEX market right here. And look at that. But then again, there's that rubber band effect I've been talking about. She smacked down below 1790 uh, in this morning's market and then uh, snapped it back up. I mean, kind of taken down, snapped back up. This is kind of strange behavior. I don't, and it's been happening for, again, I'd say the last, these kind of uh, 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 lines that you're seeing right here. Uh, and snapping back have been happening for the last couple of weeks now, uh, primarily in the early uh, New York NYMEX markets, uh, not in the uh, Globex markets. But what I have noticed in the Globex markets, primarily with silver, is that uh, that's where silver is getting its drubbing overnights in the uh, Globex markets. And again, I personally believe it's just highly manipulative behavior happening before New York's CRIMEX markets open. Uh, well, hold on. Happening in the New York Globex markets uh, before the New York's NYMEX CRIMEX market <laughs> opens. Again, this is my opinion as far as them being, you know, CRIMEX and all this stuff. But, you know, it's shady players, man. That's my opinion. And a lot of people smarter than me think the same way. Uh, but what I like to see is that, again, that rubber band kind of just snaps right back. We're back above the 1800 mark. So that shows me there's a lot of strength uh, in gold right now. And uh, they're just trying to hold it down. Why would you try to hold gold and silver prices down? Well, so you accumulate those large short positions, those large derivative sales that you made. For example, BOPA's on the hook for 800 million ounces of silver. And what was it, 30 million ounces of gold, if I'm correct? Holy smokes. And they've got to replace it with physical. You remember? The dog, not the tail. They can't replace it with more tail. <laughs> they got to replace it with the dog here. So, and uh, I believe this is the reason that uh, 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 you're seeing this monkey hammering in the overnight markets before uh, New York Crimex opens up. Uh, and you're seeing these uh, big drops right here. Uh, it's an effort to try to buy back this metal uh, at, at a cheaper price so they don't get it stuck up their heinies, uh, which is going to happen anyway. I don't see them getting out of these positions without losing money. Uh, Ted Butler feels the same way as well. Uh, let's move over here to uh, uh, the 24-hour chart on silver. I'm going to do a quick refresh here. And I think we're going to see that the uh, most of the damage done is, there you go, almost, almost a similar line. And you got to ask yourself this question too is, Gold and silver, like almost in tandem, are getting whacked, okay? It's not just like your, your silver's getting whacked by itself. It, almost simultaneously at the same time, it's like, it's, like, <laughs> it's like a takedown of both metals. Again, same time, same type of lines just about, uh, slightly different. Uh, but again, look, in the New York uh, uh, Crimex markets, and overnight drifting slowly down, softness, softness, trying to pump it down to this mark right here. Um, and again, I'm not sure what the break-even point for BOFA is from what uh, Mr. Butler's uh, speculation is on their uh, 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 being that $800 million, 800 million, 800 million ounce short. Uh, at least I'm not saying 800,000 ounces <laughs> like I was before. Uh, I kept saying 800,000 for the longest time. I still might. Uh, you know, 800 million ounces to me is just unfathomable, you know. So it's like, wow, 800 million ounces of silver, really? How can anyone buy or sell that amount? But hey, that's what happened last year. That's why... A lot of people 
uh, are starting to wake up and realize the reason gold and silver prices were suppressed last year is because J.P. Morgan sold BOFA 800 million ounces of silver and 30 million ounces of gold, which BOFA immediately, or, or in a short period of time, I believe, unloaded that into the open marketplace, which JPM, J.P. Morgan probably bought up themselves, uh, <laughs> from what I'm hearing. And uh, wow, what a crooked kind of circle that is, too. Think about that. And uh, uh, so BOFA uh, uh, sold that metal off in 2021, and, and a lot of people were saying, well, uh, people couldn't understand why 2021 was such a suck weir year for precious metals. I mean, uh, we saw silver drop from that uh, high 20s into the uh, 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 low 20s. Uh, we saw gold drop, uh, you know, be from that 1900 range, I believe, uh, to as low as what, 16, high 16s or something for a short period of time. Uh, but we've been averaging gold's held its own trust me but i don't think that we have to see the monkey hammer in gold like we do in silver uh, but no less uh, if anybody's wondering why last year um, pr prices on gold and silver was, were so suppressed suppressed is a good word to use uh, it's because uh, bofa uh, unloaded a year's worth of mine supply of silver into the market last year duh and uh, 30 million ounces of gold duh which would have definitely uh, suppress prices like they did last year, so it's understandable now. However, they've got to pay this back. How does this work out? How does uh, uh, BOFA pay back J.P. Morgan for this large, large position uh, that they owe them? Uh, was J.P. Morgan's whole goal conning BOFA into buying this uh, large position, knowing that they couldn't possibly pay it back? Um, and a couple of things that are brought up by Mr. Ted Butler, was this stupidity or was this uh, 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 just a simple effort of uh, BOFA to manipulate the gold and silver markets? Well, um, you can answer your, that question for yourself, why we're going to talk about it in a, a few minutes here. Uh, Ted Butler talks about, uh, was BOFA's uh, uh, position of buying that stupidity or was it, again, just an effort to uh, 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 manipulate gold and silver markets? Uh, I'll let you know in a few minutes. Let's get past what we're doing right now. Well, there's your 24-hour chart. We know where the uh, we know where the BS occurs. It's right there. But again, I like this snapback rubber band effect we're seeing. Uh, it shows a lot of strength in precious metals here, and we are in a bull market in precious metals. We've been in a bull market since 2016. It doesn't feel like it sometimes, but bull, gold and silver. If you take a look at the uh, other than when it gets into bubble territory, like in, we did in 1980, when it did in 2012, where it just starts kind of skyrocketing forward. That's not normal behavior for gold. Gold is usually Usually, like a snail climbing a mountain. <laughs> well, that's what a typical gold bull market looks like, like a snail climbing a mountain. And what the U.S. fiat uh, currencies look like, because it's almost a direct relationship, an inverse relationship with fiat currencies. The fiat currencies are like snails going down the mountain, okay? And both of them doing it at the same time. Uh, but again, we get into bubble ter territory where a lot of gold and silver are such small markets, as soon as uh, trillions of dollars, even 1% or a couple percent of trillions of dollars starts moving into precious metals market, uh, it's, it starts to skyrocket. So remember, this market's very small. It doesn't take much money to blow it up. And uh, we may see that blow up. Will we see, will that be a bubble? Maybe not. Maybe that just people fleeing to something safe. They finally figured it out. Uh, equity markets, uh, just kind of looking pretty crappy here. Uh, not as bad as I thought they would look. Again, I believe that um, what we're seeing right now is the uh, greatest bubble of all time uh, deflating. Uh, and why do I say deflating? Because I don't think that we haven't seen, we, we saw that 900 or 1100 point down day, what was a week, two weeks ago. Again, forgive me with my time frames, folks. It's one thing I'm really bad at is time frames. <laughs> and uh, uh, we saw that uh, trashing that the Dow got. It had an 1100 point reversal for no good reason other than I sincerely believe that the uh, plunge protection team or the Fed, somebody came in and bailed out the stock market that day to create that reversal. And they've been kind of keeping the hemorrhaging down. Remember what I, I've always made the analogy uh, of the economy in 2008 as being a patient that just got a gaping wound in their torso. And uh, all the Fed ever did to fix it was just put a slap a big ass band-aid on it and keep pumping the patient full of plasma dollars, obviously is what I'm talking about. And I believe this is what's gonna happen with the, the stock market. They're gonna treat it the same way they treated the economy, that they understand that if they let this thing just fall flat on its ass, that'll be, uh, 
bad for all their buddies <laughs> and bad for the banks that have mishandled all this money. They should fail, actually. They should just let all this shit flop, all right? And uh, uh, let, the, uh, uh, let the banks and the uh, companies uh, take the fall for this. Uh, but anyways, I digress here. Uh, so uh, what I believe they're doing right now with uh, the stock market is that they're, uh, 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 as people start to sell off and large groups start to sell off, they start to see a big down day. I believe that there's some intervention going on right here. I don't believe that this is really minus 229. Probably in reality, it's probably minus another 800 points. Uh, the, this is pure speculation on my point, but I believe they're, they're, they're slowly letting the air out of this balloon uh, because they understand what damage uh, uh, an instant implosion would do to their system. Well, that's my opinion, and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> Again, I'm not an expert in equities markets, but understanding how markets are rigged in uh, precious metals uh, makes it easier to see how markets may be rigged in other areas as well. Well, let's uh, take a look at the uh, crypto market. The poor crypto market hasn't benefited at all from any of this uh, turmoil in markets. In fact, it's kind of just followed the Dow, and the, uh, uh, which is odd to me. I didn't think it would do that. I thought it was an inflationary hedge, um, and a lot of the uh, Bitcoin folks were criticizing gold for not being an inflationary hedge, but who's holding up better right now, given the circumstances of money out there? I think a lot of speculative money, not money that really believed in Bitcoin as a uh, long-term hold or believed it in it as a real asset. I believe a lot of speculative money went into Bitcoin. That is why, uh, you know, like a casino, speculative money. Uh, uh, smart bets maybe, maybe dumb bets, but speculative money went into that and that's why we saw those highs that we saw. I think right now speculative money is pulling their money out of things like more riskier, uh, uh, and I, I, I I'm still hesitant to call an asset more riskier uh, uh, games uh, like Bitcoin and put, taking that money and maybe putting it into more secure places or investing it into stocks they felt went down. But I think the play money that went into Bitcoin for many, many years is starting to fall out of it. Uh, a lot of the uh, smaller Bitcoin players and the younger folks I know, uh, they're getting out of it. They're kind of tired of it. They see the writing on the wall as far as uh, uh, manipulation by uh, big, uh, uh, big players. All right, let's take a look at the SLV here. We're going to get to Ted's article here, too, or what Ted talks about in a quote by him and a few other things. But uh, I found this article interesting in Seeking Alpha. SLV, Silver's Fundamental, continue to improve. Um, and I know a lot of people aren't big fans of SLV. And uh, excuse me, I'm going to take a sip of coffee. I promise you I'd get some on-hold music when I'm taking a sip of coffee, but it would only last about three seconds. So give me one sec. Hmm. Maybe I can hum while I'm sipping the coffee. Mm. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, interesting article by Stuart Alsop. And, and again, I'm not a big fan of SLV. Um, for the longest period of time, I kind of thought it was definitely a crooked deal. Now I'm not so sure uh, whether uh, they have the silver to back up what they're selling. Uh, according to Ted Butler and a lot of other people, they have the silver. Uh, you know, it's in warehouses uh, to back up uh, SLV, but I'm sure there's a lot of games being played. I'd rather have the physical stuff in my hand anyways. What's the point of owning precious metals? I mean, unless you're a billionaire, multimillionaire, and you want to buy, you know, 100,000 ounces of silver, some huge amount, uh, where you possibly, you could, well, you could store it yourself. I don't know why they don't, I don't know why they'd pay someone else, but if you felt safe enough to let someone else hold it, like SLV, then maybe, SLV is also a great way if you want to play the game. If you want to go to the casino because like cryptos I considered SLV a casino as well I don't consider only physical casino but I consider SLV a casino as well and you can make money in casinos so that means SLV and cryptos um, let's take a look at why he feels that SLV is uh, uh, gonna continue to improve and really what he's saying is that silver prices are going to continue to improve uh, after a number of failed recoveries over the past few months, silver is once again at the lower end of its range, and I am adding to my positions. I agree with that, Mr. Alsop. Uh, while the metal is still up 95%, it's March 2020 low. This is less than 100% uh, rise seen in the Bloomberg commodity uh, complex. And uh, uh, okay, well, about a, what, a 11% uh, difference there. Uh, so uh, this is 95, yep, no, 12, 12% difference, I'm sorry. Uh, this is particularly noteworthy as silver tends to outperform the broader commodity complex during periods of rising gold prices. Uh, folks, if we go back a few minutes to what I said earlier, you know, silver will always follow gold. Gold is the leader. It's never been the other way around. So when gold starts marching upward, 
uh, and silver just stays stuck where it's at or goes backwards for a little bit, trust me, that's screaming a good opportunity to buy for the most part. Uh, and gold is showing really good strength despite the monkey hammering that we've been seeing. Okay, let me go on here. Uh, not, notwithstanding the concerns of many investors regarding the SOV, the ETF has a proven track record of tracking the silver price with minimal tracking errors and a reasonable expense ratio. Um, I'd have to say that's true. Uh, PSLV is kind of one of those as well. Again, not a big fan of uh, uh, having someone else hold my metal. Unless I was a multi-billionaire, then I wouldn't care too much. <laughs> After a number of failed recoveries over the past few months, silver is once again at the lower end of the range. I'm using this weakness to add to my position. Okay. And uh, where is it? I should mean seeing a comment regarding the suitability. Uh, recent weaknesses contrast with strong uh, fundamentals here. Okay, that said, from a long-term fundamental perspective, the outlook for silver and thus SOV has rarely been stronger. As I've argued on several occasions over recent years, silver prices tend to track the performance of gold. There we go. And broader commodity complex due to the metal's dual role as a monetary and, and industrial metal. What has been interesting about silver's weakness over the past six months is that it has occurred despite relatively stable gold prices and surging commodity prices. Uh, and, you know, I'm not sure if the gentleman brings it up down here, and I'm, I don't believe he does, but the reason that we have seen uh, 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 weakness in the price of silver, again, is strictly because of manipulation in the COMEX markets, folks. That's it. Pure manipulation. The, the tail wagging the dog, and I do see that changing at some point. The other fact of the matter is, is gold. Gold is owned by central banks. Do you think central banks want to drive the price of gold down? Not really. It's a net wealth of their country, part of their net wealth in their country, or their real net wealth, if you think about it. Uh, so gold is going to continue to climb, go up in value. Silver, what did I say? Will follow. Um, good article here done by uh, Mr. Alsop. It's uh, Stuart Alsop, and you can find this on Seeking Alpha. Uh, I believe you can read all this stuff for free. I have a subscription because I think it's a pretty cool site. And at some point, I'm going to start trading in stocks I'm gonna, with a little fun money. I'm going to share that with you as well. Um, and uh, you can go to uh, markets right here. Go to gold and precious metals. Click that. Uh, again, you can read these articles for free. The only downside to what I see here is, you know, this, anyone can submit articles here, and I do see a lot of the uh, people that write articles here using the official data, believing that the official data is correct, government data is correct, and data that they're receiving, which troubles me. Because if you're believing skewed data, then you're not really looking at the real situation. Uh, so a lot of these guys use government data and base their decisions on official data. Uh, also, a lot of these guys don't understand, like we do, how gold and silver are manipulated in the COMEX markets. They don't even, you know, when they hear about it, they either ignore it and or haven't heard about it and or think it's a conspiracy. Uh, so they don't bring it up or they uh, just kind of, you know, wash over that. Uh, but, you know, um, I like the article. Some of them are pretty good and it lets you understand from a perspective of a trader that's not familiar with uh, COMEX markets. <laughs> uh, okay, some of them are though. I'm not saying all of them are. Uh, let's look at GATA.org. Kind of interesting, this is done by uh, Bloomberg News. A whale is snapping at gold below 1800 likely a government uh, spot gold is bobbing nearly $1,800 an ounce. This is kind of interesting. You can read this for free on GATA.org. If you're a gold and silver physical stacker, uh, I highly recommend that there's uh, two people I like, Jagata.org uh, on gold uh, issues and uh, Ted Butler on the silver issues. Ted Butler is a paid subscription, though. Uh, but you can read a lot of his stuff out there for, there for free. So definitely have this on your bookmark bar for sure. Uh, spot gold prices bobbing around 1800 as it been since 2020. Remember, this is a Bloomberg News article, folks. Uh, Bloomberg knows nothing about precious metals. Their writers don't, for the most part, and their experts know less. Because uh, I've met, I've, I've listened and know some of the experts that uh, uh, some of these uh, corporate publications tout as experts. It's scary, trust me. <laughs> uh, the stickiness of that level, particularly as fundamentals turn more bearish, suggests there's a big buyer somewhere in these waters. All right. Since breaking above the round number of 2020, the gold price dipped below 1,900 times uh, on, or below it 19 times on a closing basis, only to regain, regain its footing. Remember, I told you gold is very strong. In the past year, the modeled value of gold, based on regression studies that include the dollar real rates and exchange traded funds holding, dropped nearly 10%, yet the metals price only fell 2%. Clearly, there's a big buyer who considers the metal a long-term hold, okay? 
Uh, such whale activity which shows up in ETF holdings nor future positions requires substantial buyer accumulating in size in the London over-the-counter market, yet vault holdings reported by London bullion market ETF blah 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 uh, don't show that. That would suggest that whoever is buying is able to buy and scale, leave little footprint in the market, and then take delivery and store the metal in secure and visible vaults. At that point, strongly, uh, it points strongly toward a sovereign buyer. Well, like the article to this point, this is one of the things that, again, this is why you don't read Bloomberg and you don't read the Wall Street Journal. Uh, they do bring this up. It's the first time we've saw, seen this bring up, but uh, Ted Butler pretty much, I believe, is already, again, I, I keep talking about Ted Butler. Boy, but the dude is smart, man. He knows his shit. He really does. Um, uh, Ted Butler is under the suspicion now. He thought last this last year that the big gold whale was maybe John Paulson or somebody. Ted spotted this in COT reports and spotted this in, in the different reports that he's been reading. And uh, uh, he said that he thought it was John Paulson at first. And now he's just recently come out and believes that this is probably both of trying to buy back their uh, their, their position possibly. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's basically what he said in his most recent article, that it's probably not a sovereign buyer, because sovereign buyers don't need to hide their purchases. And let me read the rest of this. Cent and he kind of, the gentleman that wrote this kind of says that a little bit. Central banks, and he's correct, normally declare to the International Monetary Fund the amount of metal they have on their books. But there are precedents where this has been done with some delay. Between 2009 and 2015, China reports no change in holdings, only to reveal, all right. So he's correct. Central banks do report this. This is why I have suspicions this is not, as he points out here, a sovereign buyer. As corporate media Bloomberg writer points out, he thinks it's a sovereign buyer. I believe, as Ted Butler, I think, has recently said, that it is BOFA. That's the whale out there trying to buy back this 30 million ounce position, all right. So there's your whale. Uh, and. Uh, you would think that a publication like Bloomberg or Wall Street Journal would actually get that uh, before uh, uh, Mr. Butler did, but I guess they, they're not experts, folks. They just uh, parrot what they're here or parrot what some uh, ex so-called experts told them. Uh, anyway, interesting article here in GATA.org. Recommend you read that. Let's get on to Mr. Butler. His most recent article here, which is it, dumb or smart? Uh, again, this is a subscription only, I can't read it to you, wouldn't be fair to Mr. Butler because he does derive income from writing these things, uh, which I don't begrudge anyone that gives out good, solid, smart information uh, for making uh, uh, money for their time for doing that, their professional time. Uh, so I'm, I can't read you his newsletters. I can show you little quotes and snippets, which I guess is okay with Mr. Butler. Uh, and again, uh, I, I don't think he minds because when you read some of this stuff, you'll want to subscribe to his newsletters if you're involved in this business like I am. Uh, let's take a look at a couple quotes. Which is it, dumb or smart? We've had no cr increases in silver supply and a big increase in demand, and yet the price is down close to 25% of the highs of a year ago. All right, Mr. Butler clearly points out that silver supply has been cut off. Mining has been cut off. I mean, don't forget 2020 was completely closed down. There were no mines operating. You know, and again, mine supply for silver is around 800 million ounces a year, roughly from what I understand, close to what both are shorted. Uh, but uh, um, we had no increase in supply at all. We had shortages. We had big premiums on buying silver. Even 1,000-ounce bars cost more than they used to buy cost. Uh, and there's uh, delays on getting it. So he's absolutely right. We've had no increase in su silver supply and a big increase in demand, yet the price is down 25% from last year. Why, folks? Why? Because BOFA sold 800 million ounces a year's worth of supply. Uh, probably at the uh, being conned into it by JP again purely speculation on my part uh, so let's move along what he says here as well Ted Butler says also as a result of the price gain since Friday the total losses to the eight big comics gold and silver shorts have increased by 500 million to 8.8 .8 billion separately and what he's talking about is the short positions right now in silver Oops, sorry about that ah doggone it where did I go from here okay uh, let me see if I can reduce, there we go, reduce that a little bit for you. Uh, also, as, uh, so basically the COMEX shorts that have been keep suppressing the price of silver, the commercial bankers, uh, if they were to cash out in their position right now, they'd be at an $8.8 .8 billion loss. Uh, separately, uh, Ted Butler has figured out that the loss on the 800 million ounces of silver by BOFA currently, hold on, and the 30 million ounces of gold short by BOFA that they sold in the market last year, which caused the gold and silver markets to be down 
way down last year. Um, let's see here. Separately, BOFA's losses uh, is around $3 billion. So if BOFA right now was to uh, be forced to buy this position and forced to pay the higher prices for the gold and silver uh, where, from where it was yesterday, I believe, they'd be a loss of $3 billion. And Ted Butler brings up a really good point here in the article, which I, I didn't put down, which is, is this on BOFA's part, is this stupidity? Um, is this, you know, it, it, did BOFA buy that silver, that 800? Because these derivatives, these type of derivatives in the past, historically speaking, uh, gold and silver derivatives where that stuff is shorted and sold in the market have always ended badly for the miners. It's always ended, ended badly for anyone that's been involved with it. JP knows that. JP did the deal with BOFA. So did BOFA get conned into doing that deal or did they do it simply to drive the markets down. So was there a criminal manipulative intent with BOFAs purchasing that 800 million ounces of silver derivative and 30 million ounces of gold derivative? Was there a criminal intent with that to drive the market down or was it just sheer stupidity? Well, what do you think? Uh, I'm starting to think myself that it was sheer stupidity, that maybe we put too much uh, uh, belief in the, uh, BOFA that <laughs> they did this. Uh, 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 and you know with intent to drive the markets down again that would be criminal too as well so you know was uh, their sale of that silver and their purchase of that silver was it criminal or was it just stupidity and if it was stupidity who talked them into it <laughs> again speculative on my part I'm suggesting the greatest criminal masterminds of all time JP Morgan did just my opinion of course and the opinion of people smarter than me uh-huh <laughs> all right well let's move along here and uh, just see what's in the uh, news in ZH. And a lot of you folks may wonder, you new folks say, why does he watch ZH? I like ZH because unlike corporate uh, 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 news, uh, Fox, CNBC, uh, I mean Fox, uh, MSNBC, CNN, uh, Bloomberg's, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, they all have their own narrative. It's a single point narrative. It's meant to brainwash you. This is the way it is, and any other, other people that think otherwise are nuts. Uh, so this is the way you should think. What I like about uh, hubs like this, and again, this is not written by one person, it's all different bloggers, gives you different thoughts, different ideas, and different opinions. Um, again, they don't pay me to say that, by the way. It's just one of those uh, uh, sites that I like. They, they talk about things that no one else talks about. Uh, Trudeau is definitely playing with fire, and to the truckers that are involved with this, any of my listeners out there, your truckers, you go, man. Uh, boy, I'm pretty proud of these guys uh, throughout Canada and the United States. I also heard that this trucking movement um, of blocking highways um, is, is happening now in Australia and the UK. It's spreading despite, despite corporate media trying to downplay the whole thing. Um, this thing is uh, uh, kind of exploding, and good, good, and I think the people are with you folks. Uh, anyways, let me move here. Uh, 1970s, it's worse, strongest recovery in commodity prices. All right, kind of weird that we're having such a strong, uh, 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 you know, strong levels in commodities out there because of uh, inflation and because of the system was shut down, lack of products, lack of being able to move them along the supply lines. Uh, and again, when it comes to commodities, you had to have the product out in the fields, you had to have the product coming out of the ground or something, producing the product. Uh, and if that's shut down, of course you're going to have uh, uh, those prices go up for that if you're working on true supply and demand facts, you know, factors, which we haven't with gold and silver. Maybe other markets, oil and stuff, but you know what? I suspect that if gold and silver markets are heavily manipulated by these big commercial banks, that uh, oil markets and all other markets are to some degree as well. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just our market, but I don't think so. Um, boy, isn't this terrible? You know, and just more, not just on the level of this dirt bag, in my opinion, okay, but on the level that, you know, if this was me or you or one of our kids or, uh, uh, you know, some our neighbor we knew, the average Joe, they'd been buried under the frickin' jail. But the elite, I don't care what color they are, red or blue, uh, you know, right or left, the elite get away with so much shit, man. It's not even funny. This is how you know that we're... Uh, uh, going downhill, you know what I mean? Our, our society or our political environment is going downhill. Uh, read this, silver prices could explode 22 on war or rate fears. Um, I don't believe war is going to be an issue. I think they're just posturing right now. Uh, I think it's a great way for uh, these governments, these leftist governments uh, uh, and uh, 
uh, socialist Marxist governments to uh, take the attention off their bullshit and their draconian lockdowns and their draconian whatever the frick they're doing, all right? Uh, laws and rules and taxation. I think this is a great way for them to take the focus off them by putting it on a potential war. So I'm not worried about war. I think it's just all jawboning. Uh, but however, you know, even if it's jawboning on their part, okay, just to take the attention off them, what the fuck are they doing with uh, uh, relations? You know, with uh, you know, we started to have a good relationship with Russia and people all over the world. Now these these fuckers are starting a new Cold War for political purposes or to take the uh, uh, attention off their nonsense. Give me a break. They need to go, folks. Uh, worldwide, man. I don't care if you live in the UK, Fran France, Canada, United States, Australia, uh, China. These people got to go, man. All right. <laughs> uh, remember that next elections. That's just my opinion. And uh, you know, I think I'm going to just go. That's interesting. Does Kramer run a gold CTA? They top ticked it again. Um, Jim Kramer says buy gold as portfolio insurance. He totally misses the point. Uh, <laughs> all right, I'm not going to read that right now, but VA, because we're getting a little bit long in the tooth here, but VBL does uh, really good stuff here. If you read ZH, make sure you read this. Uh, I always like to read this stuff, even though I disagree with them when it comes to cryptos. Uh, let's take a look at uh, yesterday's video. Goodbye, $20 silver. Goodbye, yellow brick road. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, I'm going to answer some questions here and make a few comments, and then uh, we'll get into uh, uh, a couple things here. I'll, let me take a look here and give me sort by newest first, and then for you, for those of you folks that get motion sickness, close your eyes because I'm going to scroll really fast. Ready? Oh, that make me dizzy. <laughs> Uh, yesterday's video, quite a few hits on it. I think people are very interested in this Bofa story. So uh, give me another sip of coffee here. One sec. I'm sorry. Hmm. Uh, tree climber brain. Oh, thank you for calling me brain. Um, <laughs> I appreciate it. Compliment. Uh, coin seems to be bull weighted. Uh, yeah, it does. I said that this morning actually because I read your comment yesterday and I did notice it does kind of like to pull up on the bulls, but every once in a while it does throw a bear out there. Maybe it's telling us something uh, long term. Uh, thanks for watching, sir. Um, hey, good for you, Helen. Uh, send me some peas. I'm only kidding. <laughs> uh, so I like to see people growing their own stuff. How can you tell if a comics official is lying? His mouth's moving exactly. Uh, Keisha, I appreciate you commenting there. And uh, all great comments, man. If you get a chance, read the comment section down. And I encourage you guys to talk to each other as well. You can learn a lot from each other. I learn from you guys too. Um, online sales, no, I'm not there yet, G. That's a freaking pretty intense thing to do. Um, you, know, you know, one day maybe a partnership will develop with uh, somebody I know and trust uh, uh, to do an online kind of deal. Not, until then, I really can't say anything. Uh, I am still just a brick and mortar local dealer, 10 to 4, Mondays through Fridays. <laughs> Thanks for watching, G. Um, yeah, Comex 19, that's about right. There are, you know, Comex has become a virus to the, to the gold and silver markets, at least the physical markets. Uh, they work for the tail, that's for sure. Uh, I can't tell if my local dealers are just ripping people off or if your deals are just really great. For one ounce gold eagle, spot plus 115 premium right now. Yeah, I've got them for like 117 for if you're going to just buy one, uh, I believe, and maybe a little cheaper. I've got to check the new spreadsheets. Uh, but uh, spot plus 140 does seem pretty high to me. And you know what? I don't get it because you know, uh, you, guys that are selling in Maryland for 140 over, they, they got to be reading uh, uh, the online. What you know, you got to be competitive with the online guys. Otherwise, you're going to lose business out of state. And I'd rather see, you know, the money stay in my community. And I'd rather make something than nothing. So, you know, um, I and you'd be going to be more competitive. You know, we don't lose any sales when people come to this get gold and silver. You know, especially the young folks, they got their cell phones with them. How much are your this and that? And I'll say, well, you don't want to buy those. Silver Eagles are too expensive. Buy these. And they, they go, yeah, you're right. They are expensive. How much are these? And I'll give them a price. And I know what they're doing. They're looking at JM Bullion, SD Bullion, or Atmex. And uh, sometimes I'll even surprise them. And I'll say, uh, we'll, beat, we'll beat that guy. And they'll say, who? And I'll say, <laughs> you know, SD or JM. And they say, oh, really? And so they, I'll give them a price. And they say, yeah, you are cheaper. So. Um, it, your local dealer should be able to do that. We do it for our customers down here. 
Um, and again, uh, nothing wrong with Atmex, JM, and SD Bullion. I'm just a highly competitive type guy. And if you want to stay in business as a brick and mortar, and you got to compete against these guys. And how do you compete? You got to beat their prices. And it's easy to do. So I would tell any dealer out there, it's easy to do. Your profit level's a little less, but you will develop more business because of it. Uh, thanks for uh, that comment, Zero. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Joe. Appreciate it as well. You're a cool commenter. <laughs> if you have to buy in line, first Majestic Silver retail price is 26 per ounce, premium included. Uh, I looked last night, uh, Clayton, and it was actually 27 when I looked. Maybe the price had changed a little bit, uh, but it was 27. But I was looking at their one ounce rounds as well. Uh, that's not bad for an online price, and uh, uh, I have handled First Majestic's products before. I think they do wholesale it, or they did at one time. So nothing wrong with their product, but again, your local dealer should be able to even beat their prices. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for watching, Clayton. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, my crew brands that I've got on special right now, and I don't have many left, uh, I, I, they are random years, uh, not any particular years. Uh, so I do have a great deal on crew brands right now, and I can sell them, beat the pants off any of the online Atmex, JM, or SD bullion sellers on KRs right now. Um, I just overstock with them. That's the truth of the matter. Uh, great commentary. Thanks. I appreciate that. And uh, 19 two pace is probably they gave it to me now worth 110. Yeah, that's true. Two pace gold two paces are pretty cool. Good fractional way to buy gold at one point, but I think the premiums are pretty high now. Uh, that Randy, that's I don't think that's enough. I'm not dissing the guy. Everyone has a right to their profit margin. Everyone does. You know, just because a guy wants to make an extra five or ten percent, that's business, man. But you can't keep business if you're not competitive. I don't think 85% on 100 bounce bars is competitive at all, sir. Uh, not in my opinion at all. Uh, so no, um, you may want to look around or ask the guy if he can pay more so you don't have to look around. You know, better to have something than nothing, all right? And you know, being competitive creates more business. I believe that. Uh, what do I believe, what do I think of BGASC? Oh my gosh. All right, I gotta admit, I don't know what it is. Let me look. <laughs> what is B A G C? I know, I, I feel ignorant right now. It sounds like something I should know, but uh, uh, let's see. I'm gonna type it in, Google search it here. Uh, metals official. Um, oh, it's another metal seller. I don't know. I really haven't followed them. B G A C S S S. Uh, I, I can't tell you anything. I'd be, I'd, you know, totally honest. I know nothing about them, so I, I, I'd be. I can't tell you anything about it. I'm sorry about that. But you did pique my curiosity, that's for sure. Uh, but I, there's a lot of companies I don't know about, good, bad, indifferent, whatever that means. Thanks for, thanks for watching, though, Dave. I really appreciate that. Um, what's a good price to pay for a 2016 Mercury Dime? That's a good question, Bo. I don't know that. Uh, cheapest that you can. <laughs> Last time I looked, uh, they were probably uh, closer to the gold value, but I know they've gone up substantially since then because everything small has a premium. Um, I really don't know. Good question. Uh, I'd have to look it up. Uh, so <laughs> uh, I, I can't remember all the prices on this stuff. Wish I could tell you that. I was trying to think at the top of my head, but it's not one of those coins I see traded very often. More of a numismatic type item. But again, at one point, they were close to the price of gold a while back ago. That's the best I can tell you. Thanks, Bo. Have a great day. Uh, ripping people. Here, GB says, ripping people off. Gold and silver dealers make currency selling fear. They re all right, let me kind of piece this piece by piece. Not true, GB. I appreciate you watching, and I hope you're having a good day. But uh, gold, some certain gold and silver dealers make current currency selling fear. I agree with you. Uh, people that sell pre-1933 gold on, for overpriced uh, premiums under the guise that it can't be confiscated, people that talk about confiscation, t people that are constantly not trying to educate their customers, yeah, um, I see fear selling right there. Uh, but if you don't see fear in the world right now, sir, um, man, you must have some rose-colored glasses on. Uh, just my opinion. Uh, they repeat the mantra that the Fed is printing money into oblivion when in fact they cannot print anything. Uh, damn, what universe are you living in, sir? <laughs> Only banks can create currency through loans. Technically, you are correct there. Uh, however, you're missing the big picture. You're missing the point. Uh, the current inflated prices on goods is a temporary condition caused by primary. All right, only banks can create money through loans. What you're doing is you're forgetting uh, about QE. You're forgetting about the altering free marketplaces by Fed intervention using huge amounts of dollars. And you're right. The loans, it should banks should that money should be 
uh, being circulated through loans to the people, not being circulated uh, buying assets and propping up countries and propping up companies and propping up. So, sir, you missed the big picture I told you there. Uh, and as far as uh, temporary, inflation is temporary, man, are you, you must have not seen the 1970s and lived through the 80s, because if you're saying that, then obviously you must be a young fellow that just is not familiar with history. Uh, but again, hey, listen, we can agree to disagree on this, uh, but ripping people off, yeah, they're out there, buddy, but not everyone. Hey, thanks for watching. Have yourself a good day. Lou, what's up? James, hey, what's going on? Um, and um, big meltdown. I don't know if we, have we seen the melt up yet? I don't, I think we're in a systematic takedown or a systematic uh, declining market. Systematic, where did I get there? I think we're in a declining market right now and uh, the, the air is coming out of this greatest bubble of all time. But the Fed, central banks are supporting a slow uh, leak, not instead of a pop, okay? That's what they're trying to do is, is, is slowly let the air out of this bubble. And I think we're just going to see markets drift downward in equities for quite some time. I hope we don't end up like Japan's economy, uh, turn into a zombie type economy, but I see us going there. Uh, goodbye, $20 US and hello, $15 solar because it's worthless. Another troll. Oh gosh, don't answer these guys, man. They're just, that, that's just troll bait right there because it's worthless. Get, really? Come on, Don Juan. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think you're going to be able to troll the people in, in my videos at all. They're too smart for you, sir. <laughs> you got to come up with something better than that. Uh, thanks for watching anyway, Don Juan. Uh, Mark Patzner, thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Uh, Ernie Jazz says, hello, teens. <laughs> I don't know, Ernie. The only way we're going to see teens is a complete collapse in the uh, uh, silver market. I mean, not in the silver market, but the complete collapse like we saw in 2008. 2008 took down every asset across the board. Didn't take down the physical gold and silver prices because the premiums were insane. You couldn't get it. It took down the paper markets. So yeah, could we see sub 20? Um, yeah, it'll be, it'd be paper markets only. You won't be able to buy real silver for that price or real gold or real silver for below $20 now if we see that happen again. Tough to say though. I think they're handling this one different. Thanks for watching, Ernie. Have a good day and uh, good luck with that. Well, if, you, if you believe it's going to hit the teens, I think you should take out a good short position. You'll make billions like Bofa. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching, Ernie. Uh, makes perfect sense to me that gold and silver paper trades are down and gold and silver bars and coins are up. Brian is due to lack of trust in COMEX and derivatives trading ring. And if you don't hold it, you don't own it. Agree with you 100%. Thanks for watching, Theta. Uh, Russell King says uh, banks have to keep buying gold and silver in order to smash down the markets. The prices can't get on much uh, as they're supporting at a higher price. True, true, true. Uh, wow. Man, you guys are bright. Uh, thanks for watching, Russell. And uh, Mark is kind of true. You know, silver, the sucky thing about silver right now is a 25% premium of some products. He's absolutely right. You know, my whole, my, my videos are all based on not paying a 25% premium unless you absolutely have to. Here's my, here's my theme. Even if you don't live in my area, because I only deal locally, uh, I don't have an online sales presence. Um, but uh, I can tell you the smartest thing any gold and silver stacker can do out there is listen to my words here. Ready? Buy the least expensive premium for a recognizable product that you can. All right? So pay the least premium for a industry recognizable product. I'm not talking about a product that you recognize or your buddy recognizes, but I'm talking about industry recognized. So if the industry recognizes this product and you can buy it for a really cheap premium and that's the that's what you should buy and what does that mean 100 ounce bars sure generic bars sure uh ones and tens it doesn't mean silver eagles where the premium is ridiculous Pla uh, uh, even maple leaves have a ridiculous premium in my opinion uh, buy the cheapest premium you can 90 percent has a ridiculous premium now so uh, i agree with you mark some of the premiums are just crazy that's why i'm here to guide my customers and and my viewers as well uh, i'm you know, don't forget my videos here are mostly to help my local South Florida customers. Uh, and I do this to create more business. This is advertising for me, folks, local advertising. Uh, but I realize a lot of people that don't live in my area watch these videos too. So um, my whole point here in these videos is to teach you all uh, to look for the best deals out there, not to get hung up on pretty designs, low mintages and other bullshit. Or you might get your coins confiscated if you don't buy pre-33. I'm not here to spin that bullshit on you, all right? Anyways, thanks for watching, Mark Google. I appreciate it. Mike Matthews, what's up? You're reminding me I need some coffee. And Tim, I will hit that link as soon as possible. So. <laughs>
Ah, here, my mantra for the year, my theme of the year. I'm going to take a sip of coffee. You know, soak this in for a second, folks. Ready? Mm. As you know, I said my theme for the year is think for yourself and question authority. Uh, and I, I'm added my little caveat here, which is, uh, uh, or my, not caveat, but I've added a little something to that, which is question your own uh, narrative as well, folks. Question yourself. You know, whose narrative is in your brain? Is it your parents? Is it societies? Is it the news? Is it, you know, or is it your own? Have you made this own determination of, of the, the narratives that are in your mind? Question yourself as well. Uh, let's take a look at uh, this and we're done. This is my web page right here. I am a local brick and mortar dealer only, so if you don't live in my area, again, I encourage you to go out and find a local dealer, local coin store, local bullion store, and uh, uh, buy from them. Keep that money local. You know, their employees spend it in your city, in your town, in your state. Keep that money local. Uh, meanwhile, uh, for my South Florida peeps, I'm open 10 to 4, Mondays through Fridays. Call me at any time at 954-493-8811. Uh, again, between the hours of 10 a.m. and 4 p.m., Mondays through Fridays, and I can help you uh, uh, get what you need and make sure that you get the best product um, as far as, you know, gold and silver. Don't forget, I also do rare coins, precious metal, you know, rare coins, rare coins, paper money. We have an estate jewelry and uh, business that watches and all those other things, but again, this is for my local customers. Uh, for you folks that aren't local, uh, please feel free to ask me any questions in the comment section. As you know, I do my best to answer them, and uh, if it's really super important, and you're, you're, you risk getting ripped off or you risk paying way too much money for something, give me a call, and if I can answer it on the phone and I'm available, I will. You know I will. All right, have a great day. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.